Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to Oil for the Journey. My name is Greg Voss and I'll be your journey reader for today. Our passage is taken from the book of 2 Corinthians, Paul's second letter to the Church of Corinth, chapters 9 through 13. Our scheduled reading follows the Bridges for Peace Ignite the Truth Bible reading plan. Let's begin. Father God, we are so thankful. We're so thankful for the plan that you have in place. Uh, we celebrate Thanksgiving. We're getting ready to celebrate uh, Christmas here soon. And Lord, uh, your timing is always perfect. As we read through your word today, I pray that we would uh, be prepared uh, to hear you, to see your son, to see your plan of salvation in the words that are on the page. Uh, bless our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's begin in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. <clears throat> now it is superfluous for me to write to you about the ministry for the saints, for I know your readiness, of which I boast about you to the people of Macedonia, saying that Achaia has been ready since last year, and your zeal has stirred up most of them, but I am sending the brothers so that our boasting about you may not prove empty in this matter, so that you may be ready, as I said you would be. Otherwise, if some Macedonians come with me and find that you are not ready, we would be humiliated, to say nothing of you for being so confident. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to go on ahead of you and arrange in advance for the gift you have promised, so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not as an, as an exaction. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that you have all sufficiency in all things at all times. You may abound in every good work. As it is written, he has distributed freely he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but also overflowing in many thanksgivings to God. By their approval of their service, they will glorify God because of your submission that comes from your confession of the gospel of Christ and the generosity of your contribution for them and for all others. While they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God upon you, thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. I, Paul, myself, <clears throat> entreat you, by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, I who am humble when face to face with you, but bold toward you when I am away. I beg of you that when I am present, I may not have to show boldness with such confidence as I count on your, on showing you, showing against some who suspect us of walking according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God, and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your disobedience is com when your obedience is complete. Look at what is before your eyes. If anyone is confident that he is Christ's, let him remind himself that just as he is Christ's, so also are we. For even if I boast a little too much of our authority, which the Lord gave for building you up and not for destroying you, I will not be ashamed. I do not want to appear to be frightened, frightening you with my letters. For they say his letters are weighty and strong, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech of no account. Let such a person understand that what we say by letter, when absent, we do when present. 
Not that we dare to classify or compare ourselves with some of those who are commending themselves, but when they measure themselves by one another and compare themselves with one another, they are without understanding. But we will not boast beyond limits, but we will boast only with regard to the area of influence God assigned to us to reach even to you. For we are not overextending ourselves as though we did not reach you. For we were the first to come all the way to you with the gospel of Christ. We do not boast beyond limit in the labors of others, but our hope is that as your faith increases, our area of influence among you may greatly and be greatly enlarged, so that we may preach the gospel in lands beyond you without boasting of work already done in another's area of influence. Let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. For it is not the one who commends himself who is approved, but the one whom the Lord commends. I wish you would bear with me a little foolishness, and a little foolishness. Do bear with me, for I feel a divine jealousy for you, since I betrothed you to one husband to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaimed, or if you receive a spirit, a different spirit from the one you received, or if you accept a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it readily enough. Indeed, I consider that I am not in the least inferior to those super apostles. Even if I am unskilled in speaking, I'm not so in knowledge. Indeed, in every way we have made this plan to you in all plain to you in all things. Or did I commit a sin in humbling myself so that you might be exalted, because I preached God's gospel to you free of charge? I robbed other churches by accepting support from them in order to serve you. And when I was with you and was in need, I did not burden any of the brothers who came from Macedonia and supplied my need. So I refrained and will refrain from burdening you in any way. As the truth of Christ is in me, this boasting of mine will not be silenced in the regions of Achaia. And why? Because I do not, because I do not, because I do not love you, who well, God knows I do. And what I am doing, I will continue to do in order to determine the claim of those who would like to claim that in their boasted missions they work on the same terms as we do. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disgu disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. I repeat, let no one think me foolish, but even if you do, accept me as a fool, so that I too may boast a little. What am I saying with this boastful confidence? I say not as the Lord would, but as a fool. Since many boasts according to the flesh, I too will boast. For you gladly bear with fools, being wise yourselves, for you bear it if someone makes slaves of you, or devours you, or takes advantage of you, or puts on airs, or strikes you in the face. To my shame, I must say we too were weak for that. We were too weak for that. But whatever anyone else dares to boast of, I am speaking as a fool. I also dare to boast of that. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they offspring of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am a better one. I am talking like a madman, with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless beatings and often near death. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the forty lashes less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea on frequent journey in danger from rivers, 
danger from robbers, danger from our own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardship, through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold exposure, and apart <clears throat> from other things, there is the daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is made to fall? And I am not indignant. If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. To God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, he who is blessed forever knows that I am not lying. At Damascus, the governor under King Aretas was guarding the city of Damascus in order to seize me. But I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped his hands. <clears throat> I must go on boasting, though there is nothing to be gained by it. I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up in the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise, whether in the whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, but God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which may, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. Though if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. So to keep me from becoming conceited, because of the surpassing greatness of the revelation, a thorn was given me in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I have been a fool. You forced me to it. For I ought to have commended by I ought to have been commended by you, for I was not at all inferior to those super apostles, even though I am nothing. The signs of the true apostle were performed among you without utmost patience, with signs and wonders and mighty works. For in what were you less favored than the rest of the churches, except that I myself did not burden you? Forgive me for this wrong. <laughs> Here for the third time, I am ready to come to you, and I will not burden, be a burden for you. I will seek not what is yours, but you. For children are not obligated to save up for their parents, but parents for the children. I will most gladly spend and be spent for your souls. If I love you more, am I to be loved less? But granting that I myself did not burden you, I was crafty, you say and I got the better of you by deceit. Did I take advantage of you through any of those whom I sent to you? I urged Titus to go and sent the brother with him. Did Titus take advantage of you? Did we not act in the same spirit? Did we not take the same steps? Have you been thinking all along that we were defending ourselves to you? <clears throat> it is in the sight of God that we have been speaking in Christ, and all for your upbuilding, beloved. For I fear that, perhaps, when I come, I may find you not as I wish, and that you may find me not as you wish, <laughs> that perhaps there may be quarreling, jealousy, anger, hostility, slander, gossip, conceit, and disorder. I fear that when I come again, my God may humble me before me before you, and I may have to mourn over many of those who sinned earlier and have not repented of the impurity, sexual immorality, and sensuality that they have practiced. 
This is the third time I'm coming to you. Every charge must be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. I warned those who sinned before and all the others, and I warn them now while absent, as I did when present on my second visit, that if I come again, I will not spare them. Since you seek proof that Christ is speaking in me, he is not weak in dealing with you, but is powerful among you. For he was crucified in weakness, but lives in the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but in dealing with you, we will live with him by the power of God. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Or do you not realize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, indeed, you fail to meet the test. I hope you will find out that we have not failed the test, but we pray to God that you may do no wrong. Not that we may appear to have met the test, but that you may do what is right, though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. Your restoration is what we pray for. For this reason, I write these things while I am away from you. And when I come, I may not have to be severe in my use of the authority that the Lord has given me for building up and not for tearing down. Finally, brothers, rejoice. Aim for restoration. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Father, we give you praise. Thank you that you passed on the story of the gospel uh, through the apostles, Paul being one of them, uh, possibly the greatest we know with all of his writings. And again, not that he was great, but that you used him in a mighty way. This being oil for the journey, we ask, Lord, that you would be preparing our hearts, keeping us focused on you, ready for the day when you come again, that we would be those who are loving your appearing. We love to see the day of Jesus, and that if it would come, we would find us prepared and ready with our lamps, ready to enter the banquet. Thank you for this ministry, and thank you for this day and your word uh, that guides us uh, like a lamp unto our feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you very much uh, for coming today. Uh, again, the, this will be recorded right after Thanksgiving and uh, getting ready for Christmas. Uh, we do pray many blessings on you in this holiday season, uh, that the name of the Lord would be um, projected all throughout our conversations and our time with family and friends uh, for the sake of the kingdom, that the gospel would continue to be shared uh, throughout the world. I invite you to share this. Uh, if you are not a part of the journey, family yet, I invite you to share this with your friends on all the platforms, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're, we're out there everywhere. Uh, and if you'd like to inquire, if you'd like to possibly be a journey reader or, or have friends you'd like to be invited, you can send a message to oil, the number four, the journey at gmail.com. That's oil for the number four, the journey at gmail.com. Uh, you can send a direct message through uh, this posting, whatever platform it's on again, and, and we'll get back with you. We're always in prayer uh, for, our, for all of our readers and all those who are involved at Oil for the Journey. We ask you to pray for us uh, and those who, who prepare this each, each day uh, to go out. We pray that the, the word of the Lord would be the oil you need uh, to carry you through each day, reminding you of his grace, reminding you uh, that God is ultimately uh, loves his people, and he's made a way that we can be saved and live with him in eternity. Uh, so have a blessed day uh, in the name of our Lord. Amen.